welcome back we're on 16.2 now which is essentially uh is just line integrals over vector fields the book has a different like has a very long title and additionally uh this section the book uh, also covers like flux integrals um which according to the syllabus uh the 114 syllabus those actually aren't going to be uh uh like these types of fundamental, like very rudimentary flux integrals, do not appear to be uh, tested or will be assigned as homework. If you look at the core problems, they're all just line integrals. So that's where we're going to stick with. Then we're going to stick with line integrals. And uh, what 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 is our line integral? Uh, so how do we calculate line integrals then? So how is this different from sixteen one? Right. Well, in sixteen in sixteen one, if my pen would, okay, in sixteen one we had a function, right? And we had, um, in 61, we had a function, which was like f of x, y, z, right? And then uh, we had a curve, right? Which uh, we ended up doing r of t, right? In this case, in 16.2, we no longer have a function. Instead, we have a vector field, all right? And it's still f, but now it's a big F, all right? And this big F is going to equal, right, something, something, something. Uh, it's a vector field, so it's a vector, right? This is a vector. Well, in a function, right, this was a function. So here, this, that's how it's di fundamentally different. We also still have a curve r of t is equal to uh, some vector as well. So the curve part stays the same. It just... The, the fundamental difference then comes down to, oh, here in 16.1 we had a function, in 16.2 we have a vector field. And pretty much 95% of the, not even 95, I'd say 99% of the integrals you're going to do from here on out are going to be over a vector field. That is what we're covering in this section and not in 16.1. So get used to vector fields, uh, even though I don't think I'm going to create that many problems for this section. So... Okay, what we have to do then, uh, let's take a look at uh, 16.2, number 19, right? And and the problem is just uh, find the work done uh, by f over the curve, uh, and then they give you the curve as well. So f is equal to xy, comma y, comma negative yz, and then r of t is equal to t, comma t squared, comma t, and then you got 0 to t to 1, all right? So how do you calculate these guys? Well, uh, the, the way we calculate 16.2 uh, line integrals is the following. We, so by definition, by definition, uh, the, the amount of work done on, by this vector field over the line, okay, is going to be the integral over the curve of f dot t ds, all right? But the way we've evaluated then is we evaluate it as f of r of t dotted with r prime of t dt. Okay. So what is f of r of t? Well, again, if I calculate f of r of t, it makes sense to you guys, right? F of r f of t was x y comma y comma negative y z, and f of r of t then we just replace our x's with whatever's in the x coordinate, right? So so now um, this is equal to t, right, something, something. And then we place our y's with whatever is in the y coordinate, OK? And so there we have, what, t squared. And then here we got t squared. And then we place our z with whatever is in the z coordinate. So this z gets matched up with that z, all right? So f of r of t is the exact same thing as we did in 16.1, except now you're applying it to a vector. And so you replace your x's, your y's, and z's with uh, the appropriate uh, the appropriate component in the r of t vector. All right. And so then z was a positive t here. Uh, oh, I missed a t squared here as well. So this is really t cubed, t squared, and then there's a negative sign here. So negative t cubed. All right. Now r prime of t. This is easy, right? You just take r of t, you take derivative, so you get 1, 2t, 1. And then now we take the integral, all right? And we have our t interval from 0 to 1. Uh, it's going to be our interval then of, 
integral from f of r of t, which is t squared comma t squared t, wow, 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 t cubed comma t squared comma negative t cubed dotted with uh, 1, 2t, 1, dt. All right, and again, these guys come from here, okay? So, um, now what? Now, if you do the dot product, you get t cubed uh, plus 2t cubed uh, minus t cubed dt from 0 to 1. And so this becomes then the integral from 0 to 1 of just 2t cubed, which is uh, t to the fourth over 2 uh, from 0 to 1. And so the work done is 1 half. Okay. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, the other type of problem you're going to get then is if uh, your curve previously, right, right, so in 16.1, we did two examples, one where the curve was given and one you had to parameterize the curve yourself. Uh, yeah, and that's really the only other kind of ex uh, problem you're going to get uh, where you have to parameterize the curve yourself. So let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, what, what do I want to do? Let's do, let's do this problem. This is a good problem. So we're going to do 16 to uh, 23. Okay. And it's the, f it's the following. Uh, evaluate the integral over C of x, y, dx plus x plus y, dy uh, along y equals x squared. All right. So what in the world does this mean? Well, uh, uh, from, sorry, so we need to l learn where this curve is going from, a negative 1, comma 1 to 2, comma 4. All right, so let's break down what we want to do. So here we have some integral that we don't, we, that, that doesn't appear familiar to us, right? Uh, we have x, y, dx plus uh, x plus y, dy. So what does this mean? When we, when we have um, an integral, right? And this is the other definition of work that I did not cover. Work is also equal to f dot dr. Okay, so that's going to be the second definition of work. So now we have two uh, work uh, definitions. We got f dot dr and we got f dot tds, right? So we got f dot tds here and now we got work is equal to f dot dr. And what is dr? dr is equal to uh, dx comma dy comma dz in three dimensions, right? And so that means in two dimensions, it's just dx comma dy uh, in two dimensions, right? So you can see that, right? We have an act, we have a dx here and we have a dy. So what happened? Well, what happened was then we took f dotted with dx comma dy, right? And we got xy dx uh, plus x plus y dy, right? So now we can find out what f is, and from here we see that, oh, f is just going to be the vector where the guy associated with dx, right, this guy associated with dx is going to be in the x component, right, and then this guy associated with dy is going to be in the y component of f. Uh, so that's x plus y. So this is how we can recover then the the vector uh, or the vector field from this type of problem. Okay, so here is the, your x y. It's in front of the dx, and then your x plus y is in front of the dy. And sometimes they'll be tricky um, or a little sneaky, and they'll put like they'll say x plus y dy plus x y dx. But again, just remember that whatever is is associated. Whoops, whatever is associated with the dx will go into the x component of the vector field, and whatever associated with the dy will go into the y component of the vector field. And if you're in three dimensions and you have a dz, then whatever's in front of dz will go into the z component of your vector field, okay? So first, uh, we recover uh, the vector field, which uh, now you guys know how to do that. And now we gotta parameterize the curve, all right? So uh, this was, I guess, step one, was to find f, all right, and then step two is to parameterize the curve. And so 
what is our curve? Well, our curve is y is equal to x squared, right? So that means, what is the independent variable and what is the dependent variable here? This is the independent variable, right? Because y is dependent on x in this case. So uh, that means x is going to be the dependent variable. And what do I want to do then? I want to write uh, r of t is going to be equal to, all right, it's going to equal some, some guy has to be t, all right? And then we find the response from the other variable. Well, oh, what, wow, I flipped this really bad. Wow, that's embarrassing. Um, right, y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable because y, uh, you, you can think of it that way, right? When you write an equation like y is equal to x plus 2, right? That's how we usually, when you graph it, we say y is, on the, is the independent variable um, because it's on the vertical axis. So in this case, since x is the independent variable, we can let it be anything. And so we're going to let x be t, all right? And so now y is equal to x squared. So y is going to be equal to t squared, right? If I let x equal t. So then y is t squared. And this is going to be uh, my curve, all right? And now what? Now we go from 1, 1 to 2, 4, which means t then goes from, uh, goes from negative 1 to 2, right? Because x started at negative 1 and goes to 2. Well, that means t went from negative 1 to 2 as well, since x is just equal to t, all right? So again, I don't want to spend too much time in parameterizing because uh, this is something I'll cover heavily in uh, recitations, but we have to do it uh, here just to get, uh, just to know how to set up this problem. Okay, so now what do I do? Now it's to solve, uh, well, f dot dr is also equal to f of r of t dotted with uh, r prime of t, okay, dt. And in this case now, what is f of r of t? Well, f is going to be uh, is going to be x y, so that's t times t squared, and then x plus y is t plus t squared. Okay, uh, and then uh, what now? R prime of t is going to be so here's r. You take the derivative of that guy, and you'll get one comma two t dt. So I get the integral, and this is t cubed plus 2t squared plus 2t cubed dt. All right, so that's uh, taking the dot product of those two vectors, and I'm going from negative 1 to 2. And now what do I have? I got negative 1 to 2. This becomes uh, 2t squared plus 3t cubed dt. And... Uh, this becomes the, then the valuation of t cubed or 2t cubed over 3 um, plus 3t to the fourth over 4 from negative 1 to 2. And that ends up being, I'm just lazy, I don't want to figure it out. <laughs> okay, well, it looks like I, I do need to figure it out. Well, damn it. Uh, it'll be. Uh, eight, so sixteen thirds, um, plus two six. Okay, uh, is that six? Sixteen thirds plus twelve. Right, uh, minus. Uh, this becomes negative two thirds, and then plus three fourths, and so this is what this is thirty six over three, plus that, so fifty two thirds. And then on this side, minus uh, two thirds plus three fourths. Well, I think it was eight, nine, minus one twelfths. And yeah, uh, you gotta multiply this by four, 208, so 207 over 12. And I'm pretty sure you can simplify this uh, even more so. Uh, what is it? Uh, divide by three, oh, it's 69 over four, nice. So. 69 over 4 if you divide top and bottom by 3. And yeah, uh, that's going to be the, the work then uh, in this problem. So again, the second problem, we had a funky, we got a funky integral going on, but we figured out how to extract, uh, we figured out how to extract f from that funky integral. And 
and then uh, we parameterize this curve y equals x squared, which uh, we did here, and then we just solved our integral. So again, uh, not terribly bad. These guys aren't that bad. The hardest part is going to be para parameterizing your curve. All right, this part parameterizing um, is going to be. Uh, you need to get really good at this. All right, because you can because uh, sometimes on finals problems. Uh, they'll make they'll trick you into thinking that you can use one of the theorems you're going to use later on, but really the easiest way will be param parameterizing the curves uh, by themselves and evaluating the line integral like this. So again, uh, we're only doing line integrals, and uh, I'm not going to do the flux integrals because there's not those are technically not covered by the core problems of uh, 16.2, so we're not going to talk about them. And now we're going to move on to 16.3, which is path independence, which is one of the most popular types of problems that ends up on exams. And yeah, I'll see you guys in that next video.